This is for AQA A2 Business Studies Unit 10 and the video is based on the divorce of ownership. Now if we think about a, a sole trader, a sole trader is often managed by the owner. So the owner of the sole trader is, is also the manager, but when we start thinking about much larger companies and we start thinking about, for example, public limited companies, what you might find is the managers are not actually the owners of the business, especially when we consider majority shareholders or businesses with a few different uh, very big shareholders. They might be considered to be the owners, but they've appointed managers to, to manage the business on their behalf. And now what divorce of ownership looks at is um, as to where the tensions might start to occur as the owners and the managers maybe have conflicting objectives. So if we think about this diagram, this is, a, this is a, a, again a good diagram, it's from one of the textbooks and it's based on the divorce of ownership. We can see that some of these objectives, uh, they, may, they may completely contrast. So for example, the controller, which is known as, uh, which sorry, the manager will be known as the controller because they control the, the, the decision making on a day to day basis. So maybe some of their objectives is to do salaries, do the pecs of the job, the status of the job, the power of the job. And we can definitely see that in some industries, especially banking, where if we think about the remuneration packages in, some, in, in the banking industry and some of the bonuses that they're issuing themselves, uh, you could definitely see that uh, that could be one of their objectives. However, the shareholder, their main objective is to, I suppose, maximise their dividends. Um, in terms of how to achieve this, well, the manager probably wants to look at market uh, maximising growth, uh, sales, market share. And, and again, the, the obviously would uh, think about profit as well, but the owners, um, the, being the shareholders, they would definitely look at maximising profits because the dividends obviously would come from those profits. Now, these strategies that the manager may uh, start to implement, they might completely differ from the idea of the shareholders, and the shareholders might not agree with how the manager is perhaps trying to maximise his profit or maximise his market share or sales, etc. And there might be disagreements. What we'll do within this video is we'll look at some real-life examples of when this has happened uh, and why, and, and what would the, the, I suppose, the outcome. So this is an example uh, which relates to Morrison's, which uh, the 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 fourth biggest supermarket within the UK. They've got the fourth highest market share, and it's also to do with uh, Sir Ken Morrison, who um, criticised the current management of Morrison's. So Morrison's former chairman accuses management of ruining the supermarket. So Sir Ken Morrison draws applause at AGM for outbursts in which he blames disastrous results on the bosses Phillips and Gibson. Now in this article, you can find the article online, but I've just picked out certain key points which I think really show, uh, I suppose, this concept in action. So dressed in his trademark striped company tie, Morrison's outburst drew loud applause from hundreds of independent shareholders in the meeting at the company's Bradford headquarters as he picked apart the record of Phillips and his management colleagues. He said the supermarket had been neglected in favour of ill-conceived ventures into babyware retailing, convenience stores and selling online. So if we think about it from, uh, from that point of view, what he's, uh, again, him and, his sh uh, him and the shareholders believe that some of the strategies the management have, uh, have put in place to try and uh, increase the growth of Morrison's uh, has been ill-advised. So again, if you think about Ansoft Matrix and uh, maybe in terms of market development and the e-commerce market, he believes that maybe that shouldn't have been the way forward. Or in terms of product development and getting into babyware retailing, um, or you could even argue that's that's heading maybe even towards diversification, but he believed that that wasn't the way to go and they should have focused on the supermarket itself. So a really first class business has been ruined by a lack of leadership from the top, said Morrison, who built his father grocery uh, shop into a national chain before stepping down in 2008. The results have been described by the chairman and the chief executive as disappointing and I personally thought they were disastrous. So what this article is all about is uh, Ken Morrison, who's, who's obviously still very influential in terms of Morrison's, and I, I'm sure he's definitely got... Um, a lot of shares within Morrison still, as well as hundreds of other independent shareholders have accused Phillips and Green of managing Morrison's in the wrong way and there's been, again, a conflict in terms of strategy. The next example I'm going to look at is based on Sports Direct 
And as the article says here, the title, more shareholders criticise Sports Direct's corporate governance. So LNG and Aberdeen Asset Management join Investor Forum in calling for plan of action to rebuild confidence in retailer. Now, just to get, before I move on to the article, I'm just going to give you a, a bit more information from the video. Mike Ashley, the Sports Direct founder and majority shareholder, has stepped in to rescue the job of his embattled chairman. Keith Hellowell survived a second re-election vote today, but only by relying on Mr Ashley's voting rights. In a rerun of a ballot at last September's annual meeting, 54% of independent shareholders voted against Dr Hellowell's reappointment. Mr Ashley's backing ensured his survival. Well, Paul Lee is head of corporate governance at Aberdeen Asset Management, an institutional investor in Sports Direct that had publicly called for Keith Hellowell to go. So, Paul, Keith Hellowell said last year that if he didn't get the support of independent shareholders, a majority of them, this September's AGM, he would go. Mike Ashley's asked him to reconsider that. What on earth's going on? I, I think that's a slightly surprising um, statement for the company to make and, and probably not terribly helpful. I think, I think what everybody should be focused on is what can and should be delivered over the next eight months before the AGM comes around. So what should be delivered? Well, the, the company's made a, a commitment to, to have an independent review on, on working practices on its corporate governance. It's talked about uh, addressing a, a lot of the findings on uh, its treatment of workers that, that have come out of the existing review. It, it's talked about adding a, a worker representative to the board. That's quite a controversial um, idea, but if any company could, could do with one of those, I think people would generally agree that Sports Direct could do. Most importantly, they, they need to, to upgrade the executive team, have uh, a team in place that is genuinely able to run what is now a, a large and complicated business and, and take that forwards for the benefit of all shareholders. Yeah, I mean, Mike Ashley has already announced some changes along, along that front. Uh, has that gone far enough for you? Clearly not, I guess. I, I, I don't think it has gone far enough. I mean, the, the, the steps that have been taken so far are the parting of the ways with the, the former chief executive and the former inter interim finance director. Mm. That's helpful. Um, we, for, for one shareholder, voted against their re-elections at the, at the last AGM because we'd lost confidence in their ability to run the business. We think that the, um, the team needs to be bolstered from here to, to enable them to, to actually take things forward. It was quite striking, though. I mean, 54% of independent shareholders today voted against Dr Hellowell's appointment. That leaves 46% that, that went along with him. Was that, I, did that surprise you? I, well, it, it's pretty much a repeat of the, of the vote at the, at the AGM, almost to, to the last numbers. I, I do, I find it slightly surprising, but, but I think it's, it's not a personal issue. This, this is an issue about the, the way the company is run overall. Um, in a sense, the, the vote on Hellowell's become a rallying point for, for shareholders, but actually it's, it, we, we should depersonalise it and talk about running the business as a whole and, and addressing the, the broader issues. I mean, a lot of people have to have Sports Direct shares because they're tracking an index or whatever. I mean, you're, you're an active fund manager. Why on earth do you hold uh, them? We're, we're an active fund manager, but we have a, a pretty sizable passive business these days. And, and uh, you know, the, the company doesn't meet our quality thresholds. We, we wouldn't hold it as it stands uh, in, in the active portfolios. We, we only hold it uh, on the passive side. Right. I think a lot of people like us have have our only shareholders because they are obliged to be rather than right. because they've taken the active decision and and actually the company's under owned as a result in in that sense mm -hmm. and and what they need to deliver over the next several months is reasons for people to want to be shareholders because a cynic company. would say paul that you know most shareholders most city investors sat back and uh, enjoyed the ride when the share price was going up and profits were rising it's only really since the uh, share prices started to fall and profits have dropped, that I, the I've, corporate governance has been called into question. I, I've certainly heard that. I, I personally went to, to the company's first AGM when it, when it became a public company, uh, however many years ago that is now. Um, we've been acting ac active for many years in trying to improve the governance here. We seem to have got traction in the, in the last little while and, and things are changing over, over the last few months. Some changes have been made. Lots more still needs to be done. 
So, uh, as the video uh, showed you, and these two quotes that came from the article, uh, governance is failing, uh, failing to clearly result in declines in operating performance and long-term shareholder value. Sports Direct is a multi-million pound business that would benefit from an injection of new talent with the skill set required to run an enterprise of its size and complexity. So the issues are pretty much how Sports Direct has, has, has been um, operated recently in terms of the ethical factors. With the Panorama documentary and the government intervention, they've been in the news a lot for really negative practice, and the, especially the HR strategies have been proven to be um, really con uh, controversial, and that's had a massive impact on the reputation of Sports Direct, and the shareholders are not happy about it. Because if you think about it, that negative publicity is really going to impact the share value, and again, it might have an impact on profits with, with boycotts, and pressure group activity, it could it could cause a decline in sales, and therefore a decline in profits and uh, as I've said before, dividends. So the shareholders are not happy. The, 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 I suppose one of the biggest issues is the influence of Mike Ashley because obviously he is he is the majority shareholder, and one of the problems with Sports Direct is that he's actually appointed many of his friends and family in management positions and therefore he's very protective of them. So even the other majority shareholders and other independent shareholders are trying are trying to obviously uh, not reappoint some of these management uh, these managers, sorry. Mike Ashley is, is still he's still got a massive say. And, and that's causing problems. However, as it did say in that video, they have managed to uh, dismiss some of the management. I think it's the finance director uh, because, again, they're just they're not confident in their ability. And they're not confident in their ability to achieve the objectives of the shareholder. And there we see um, the problem.